Good afternoon, lovely people. Welcome, finally, to the May garden tour. I think this is the latest I've ever shown you the garden at the beginning of the month. Uh, it's not actually the beginning of the month, it's more like, I think it's about the 7th of May. Mmm, okay, confession time. Um, the garden is not where it would normally be at the beginning of May. I've been saying probably I think since about November last year that I'm running late, I'm running late, don't worry I'll catch up. And in terms of seed sowing, uh, there's still time, you know, that's fine, I've got to get all my sort of beans etc, that sort of thing planted or sown. A lot of the garden now is about bringing the, the seedlings from home down here to harden off and then plant out. So I'm not actually worried in terms of, say, seeds, sowing and planting plants. But, um, ah, bed preparation and structure building. I'm just not getting there this year. I'm not getting there. Um, I'm trying not to get upset now. This is silly. I've got 20 beds, my new mini sort of permanent beds. Each one is about three and a half metres long, by about a metre 20, metre 50 wide in some places. So I have 20 of them. Here we are, the end of the first week of May, and I've only got seven of them prepped and sewn. And, um, I'm really, really struggling this year. Now, normally, I try to put a really good spin on everything and, and sort of say to you, I'm not worried, I'm not worried, yeah, I'll catch up, da, da, da. But the last few months, um, my knees have been terrible. I mean, really terrible and gradually getting worse. And I found in the last month, literally, if I do any work in the garden and then for three or four days afterwards I'm pretty much incapacitated. Um, last Saturday I was here after the rain. I tried to make the most of it having rained and it makes the beds a bit easier to sort out. I managed one and a half beds, gave up, went home. The next day I didn't leave the house at all because I couldn't get down the stairs. You know, it's not, this is not tenable anymore. So, um, look, I'm not saying I'm going to give up the plot. But put it this way, if it's this hard this year compared with last year, by the time we come to in another year's time, I'm just not going to be able to manage it. Um, it completely breaks my heart, I don't know what to do. So obviously what I need to do is get and see my doctor so that my doctor can refer me back to the orthopaedic team so I can just beg them please get one of my knees replaced. I know I'm considered young for knee replacement but in terms of quality of life, in all honesty, uh, it's rubbish. It's rubbish at the moment. Um, you know, I wake up in pain, I spend the whole day in pain, the pain getting worse, I go to bed in pain, I don't sleep because I'm in pain. And I'm not saying any of this as a pity party, I don't want anyone's pity, I'm not interested. I'm just saying this because, to explain why the garden is in such a state at the moment, why it's so far behind, like I said, in bed prep. If the beds were done, I wouldn't be at all worried at the moment because now I would quite happily just do a little bit of seed sowing each day. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's taking me two, three times as long to do these days what I used to do. Oh God, that doesn't make sense. For example, um, this is following on from me sowing my parsnips and calendula. It's still the same day, hence I'm in the same clothes getting that done and getting the red onions in with the little bits of bed prep involved it's taken me about four hours it's ridiculous four hours you know three or four years ago that would have taken me one hour to do both of them so uh, and that's also a bit of an explanation I think someone was asking me the other day or, or commenting saying it's funny that 
I'm the only person in lockdown who's got no time. <laughs> That's because everything is taking me longer than it ever used to. So yeah, it's frustrating. It's disconcerting. And I have to be, I have to be realistic about the situation and I'm going to plow on as best I can with the garden this year. Once that darned bed prep is done, things will be easier. But I'm sort of saying this as a bit of an excuse for further down the line that if half the garden isn't planted this year, or not half, but maybe a third of it isn't planted this year, you'll have to forgive me. It will just be purely a case of, I can't do it. I can't physically do it. Oh, it's driving me insane. Right. Before I get too daft about it all, there are some lovely, lovely things to see in the garden. There's some lovely new growth. So let's go and have a look at it and celebrate what is there because, like I say, what is there is gorgeous. Oh, what a pretty sight. So it's quite late in the afternoon, hence the light isn't perfect for filming, but Oh, isn't this a happy sight? The uh, Limnanthes Douglasii, poached egg plant. The forget-me-nots, and I've already forgotten their Latin name. It's all interspersed with, there's loads of nigella coming up. Love in a mist. I thought I had some cosmos coming up, but apparently not. And as I was mentioning in the parsnip and calendula video, I'm planning to sow calendula all along the edge of here so it's just a really beautiful happy sight for anyone walking down the path. Ah look, look at the size of the tree lily. I'm going to come this way and hopefully my shadow won't be in the way but my goodness look how it's grown and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stalks this year. This one being a bit naughty it's come up in front of my sign <laughs> never mind but yeah that's all got to be oh two and a half feet tall already hurrah I can't wait oh look it's just a lovely sight isn't it this mass ma oopsie <laughs> clanking into the pea supports this mass of flowers I do do love it then all the peas are planted these are the ones I sowed in January. They've all been flowering. And <laughs> look at this. The tiniest little pod forming. Oh, slightly larger pods forming. Yay. Again, lovely little flower. Hey, sweet pea. It's not a sweet pea, it's an eating pea. And then just along from them, here on the end, these are the ones that I direct sowed. They will look happy, healthy coming along. If you remember when I put them in the bottom of that little trench I chucked in a load of chilli powder with them and hopefully that's what kept the mice off which is a lesson to be learned for this autumn when I come to put the broad beans in because look at my pathetic broad bean patch this year. Absolutely decimated by the mice. I sowed once, I sowed twice I sowed a third time, a bit annoying, but, 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 coming in, look, yay, first few pods, actually there's quite a few pods in there forming, so I'm not going to have anything like the harvest of previous years, but I'll have a little bit, that's the main thing. Let's see if I can spot any more. Oh yeah, look, some down here too. See, that's the little black bit on the end, in case you've never grown them before. That's just where the flower has died, just rubs off. I, mean, I don't bother rubbing them off, but that's all it is. It's nothing to worry about. Woohoo! <laughs> okay. <laughs> usual interruption okay so this is the bed I next need to work on this will be for the Coco de Pampol 
no change in one, two, three beds. That's for the climbing squash, my cathedral bed. Aye, aye, aye. That's the ones I'm wondering whether I won't actually be able to get round to this year. I'll try, but I'm not going to kill myself to do it. Coming around to main bed number two. This is now the parsnips and calendula sown. And again, these next two beds, these both need prepping for chickpeas and for bird du rock and core. I do think, I think I'll be able to manage the cocoa and these two beds. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my hardest. I'm going to try, I promise I'll try. And then the rest of the garden, we'll see. But happy days along here. My four rows of spuds. These are my new potatoes, my earlies, my salad potatoes. They're pretty much all up. And then these two rows are my main crop. This is my cara. And hello. <laughs> Yay. Oh, I think I've had a bit of a, a fox moment. So I'm delighted to see them coming up. Now we're due frost in the next few days. So I will earth them all up. And by that, what I mean is where I've got my lovely ridges of soil, just drag a bit down over the foliage to protect them from the frost. Do you know what? This is far from ideal lighting for filming, but I find it beautiful. You can see the, um, the chard is now starting to go to seed. I haven't taken it out yet. A, because I'm still eating it. B, because it's beautiful. And C, because when I do, I want to get it all chopped to help with compost because at the moment a lot of my compost is brown so this will be great as some green oh, little jungle little charred jungle fab okay that's coming oh I've just got to show you something else as well can I just say how pleasing is this path. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Bowling green or what? <laughs> Righty ho, yes, so parsnips and calendula in, fab. So in this bed, actually, if I can get the this bed prepped for chickpeas and the next for the uh, bird du rock and core, all five of these beds will be in action. That would be great. Okay, now this one, it's onions, carrots, onions, currently garlic, was purple sprouting. Purple sprouting around now. Just take you that way. Oh, path, path porn. <laughs> okay, so I've started taking out the purple sprouting now. This bed I would like to prep. This will be for celery and fennel. But again, I'm just going to have to see what I can manage without, you know, really hurting myself. Um, yeah, we'll see. Then, when the garlic comes out, the flint corn will go in, but that's not gonna be for at least, well, about another month. Oh, <laughs> look, of course, because it was last year's potato bed, I will have a little surprise harvest. There's one there, I think I've spotted a couple more down there, bigger ones. But yeah, good stuff. Ah yes, this bed I've just literally just got done. This is my red onions, so I need to remember to um, put the nets on that. Obviously nothing's gonna happen with that for a little while. My NHS bed, I really need to keep on top of keeping that moist because if they start to germinate, and they're dry for two or three days, they will just die. The white onions, I did manage to get in about three weeks ago without taking the nets off. Hopla, I can show you. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Yay! Oh! Yay through the net. <laughs> Let's just give that a bit of space. Yay! Yay! So, fabulous. If nothing else, <laughs> I'll have some onions this year. Woohoo! So, excuse my shadow. 
So this is another, so rather like, I think number one bed, the top bed, that's the one I'm gonna struggle with that may not happen. This one, I'm hoping I can get done. This one, three are done, and then those two to follow, I think I'll be able to manage it. Uh, and then this is my other worrisome bed. So at the moment, this is all the ex-purple sprouting broccoli waiting to be chopped. That will go in the compost. But this is supposed to be two beds of tomatoes. Oh, I really want my tomatoes. In each bed I do two rows. A row of eight, a row of eight, row of eight, row of eight. So that gives me 32 plants, which it does for me. Where the ex-kale was. That should be my peppers and cukes. And then behind the squash. So I'm just going to have to... Look, I'll just see what I can do. If I can't do it, I can't do it. If I can do it, I can. Oh, look at the celery. So this is my overwintered celery. Still harvesting. But you can see now, oh, you know, they've trebled in size. So this is them now putting out their... Um, they're getting ready to flower and set seed. And I'm determined to have a couple of them stay in in order that for the first time ever... I can gather my own celery seed. Oh, that would be fantastic. That would be absolutely brilliant. I love it around this side. This time of the afternoon, the dappled shade from the rose tree. Gorgeous. And I was just noticing today, let me see if I find it for you. Look, getting, getting really big fat buds on the rose bush. There's quite a few of them up there. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Some of them look like they're just about ready to burst open. I reckon give that another week and I'll have some pretty little baby buds. Look at that sky, isn't that gorgeous? Oh, reasons to be cheerful, definitely. Okay, yeah, so this, like I said, this is where I should have my horizontal squash. It might be that I just kind of dig a small hole, pop them in, and ignore the surrounding soil. <laughs> might have to. Oh, this is another happy sight. Look at this beautiful love in a mess. Gorgeous. So I'm just going to come around this side in the cold frame. I'm very happy to have. Oh, we're going to go into deep shadow now. Hang on. So that's all my trays of brassicas. And look, the first ones are coming. I think that's about five days after sowing. And some in there. What I forgot to mention the other day when I was talking about my flint corn, uh, when I sowed it, I wrapped it in tulle again because the mice like the flint corn too. And I did bring down... That's a tray of, I think it's Gardener's Delight tomatoes. And over in that big tray, that's my fair ozen peppers. Oh, that one's copped it. But the others are fine. So, as I was mentioning, it had been my plan to bring a bag every day. But I'm going to hold off till after this frost. But these are all looking all right, considering A, they've been a bit scorched in the day. B, they've been very dry. And C, it's been chilly at night. So yeah, I'm pleased with those so far. Uh, the rhubarb, that's looking perfectly happy. But also, look what's going on down here. <laughs> the grapevine. It looks like it might actually grow this year. Goodness me. That'd be fab. I should just leave it in peace. Taunton Dean's still going mad and I think it's trying to sprout as in flower, so I think I should try and get some cuttings pretty pronto. But oh, this bed is giving me so much delight at the moment. Let's start here. Oh, look at that green. Look at those purples. Oh, how gorgeous. The idea with the chives, when I originally planted this bed up was that I'd have little pockets of chives. Oh, it's going to be hard to see because we're in and out of the shadow. Yeah, I was going to have pockets of chives between... Let me come and sit a second, it's going to be easier. Between the lavenders. 
so that before the lavenders flower I'd have the chives out so I'd have a sort of a succession of these lovely little purple blooms but in <laughs> some of the pockets didn't quite work ah the verbena bonariensis can you see it's shooting so when I put it in it looked dead as a dodo and I didn't have much hope for it but it's taken yay and I'm going to just come around the other side with you a second we're going to go back into bright bright light let's have a moment to adjust oh just to say as well the this is the uh, Batalini tulips and the Tarda have gone over so I've just taken off the very the very flowering tip um, when your tulips and daffs and things like that go over just take off that little flowering tip where it's going to try and make a seed head leave the stalk leave the leaves leave everything to just die back naturally because that's going to take goodness back down into the bulb so yeah these really kind of need doing as well i shall do those shortly the english lavender it's looking fit to burst again, isn't it? Yay! Down here, the scabious. This is the little scabious. Starting to get all its buds coming on. Beautiful. The massacred hyssops are beautifully coming back to life. Loads of flowers on the um, blueberry stilt, but this is what I want to show you. Oh, we're going to be right into the light look at this beauty this is the leucogem estivum estivum i think its nickname is summer snowflakes so each one of these little dangles is going to open up to be a little tulip a sort of, um, little trumpet of a flower beautiful there's another one just there another one coming here oh happy days I'm loving how the herb garden is looking this year. All these chives, there's another bunch to come here. They have taken 18 months or so, getting on for two years, to get to this stage where they're well enough to establish to flower beautifully for me. Oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Don't forget to fill up your drinking stations. <laughs> Yeah, happy days, happy with that. And then last but not least on the deck, I had to nick the mesh from around here to put on my um, calendula. <laughs> Just put whatever tiles and slates I had. Those sweet peas look very happy in the back, doing their thing. Obviously no sign of the achocha yet, they've only just gone in. Elephant garlic, looking great. Still not sure what I'm gonna do with them. <laughs> Little self-seeded chamomiles. I was saying this on my Facebook page the other day. It's not quite a cup of tea yet. But how lovely to see them. Really lovely. Oh, my box of labels. That's to remind me I need to start labelling where I've sown this year. And then finally, finally Esther. Yay, spuds. <laughs> so I need to remember to get a little bit of compost from the community heap to cover those with against this predicted frost. Oh, let's have a seat again. Oh, those chives are so happy making, aren't they? Oh, I love it. Love. And of course, the great thing now, excuse my great big shadow, is the lovely thing about this bed is because everything's sort of pretty much permanent, perennial, I can get away with not doing much work in it just a bit of pruning a bit of harvesting but otherwise just let it get on with it which <laughs> let's face it at the moment I need so oh blah hmm like I said not quite where I would normally hope to be at this stage in March far from it oh trying not to be disappointed trying not to be <laughs> worried and panicking and I think because in the last couple of days I've sort of had a chat with myself about 
the possibility that I won't get the whole garden sorted this year. Once, once I'd sort of, sort of said that aloud to myself, it's kind of made it easier for me to think, you know, it may not happen and that's going to be okay. What will be, will be, and I will enjoy what is here. So, from me, my veggie garden to be, my herb garden that is, I'm going to say cheerio to you all for now. Please, all of you, keep well. Keep happy in your gardens. Keep plugging away if you can, and if you can't, well, like me, just enjoy what you've already got. I will see you all again really soon. Until then, take care everyone. Bye for now.